Again, the aviation industry is no stranger to challenges, and recent incidents have brought renewed scrutiny to Boeing's aircraft. The Boeing 737 MAX 8 faced a weird incident at Milan Bergamo Airport, causing temporary disruptions and raising questions about its operational safety. Meanwhile, the FAA has issued alerts regarding potential risks associated with an aircraft that is considered safe. 777. So what just happens to 737 MAX and 777? How do the stakeholders solve it? Let's dive into today's episode. On October 1st, 4, Ryanair Boeing. 737 MAX 8 tires burst upon landing at Milan Bergamo Orio Alserio International Airport in Italy, causing the airport to shut down. According to the airport's statement released shortly after the incident, the Ryanair 737 MAX 8 200, registered as EIIGI, was operating flight FR846 from Barcelona El Prat Airport, BCN, to Milan Bergamo Airport. The flight took off from Barcelona at 6.42 local time and landed in Bergamo at 7.55 local time. During landing on the airport's only runway, four tires on the main landing gear burst, forcing the 737 MAX 8 to come to a halt on the runway. Fortunately, all passengers and crew were evacuated with the assistance of the Oreo Alserio Fire Department, the local city unit, allowing the passengers to disembark safely. They were then escorted to the terminal, the airport further stated. A Ryanair spokesperson affirmed that the 737 MAX 8 200 experienced a tire issue upon landing in Bergamo. Passengers disembarked normally, and the aircraft was inspected by engineers, who are servicing the aircraft so that it can return to service. Tell me your thoughts. If you have to choose between using other transportation, or being forced to fly with a 737 MAX 8 in the future, only those two options. Well, let's discuss. No matter how little or how much, it will definitely have consequences. The aftermath of this incident resulted in damage to the runway. The tire burst caused 450 meters of damage to the runway, affecting the surface and creating a cut approximately one centimeter deep. Consequently, repairs were required, and the airport sought the assistance of a specialized contracted company to restore operations at Milan Bergamo Airport. During that time, the airport had to temporarily close initially announcing a closure until 5 p.m., which was then extended to 6 p.m., and finally to 8 p.m. However, Milan Bergamo Airport resumed operations at 7.30 p.m. The first flight to land was Norwegian Flight D, 8,294-0 from Helsinki Airport, touching down at 7.42 p.m. according to Flight Radar 24. According to the flight tracking website, the Ryanair 737 MAX 8 200 remains grounded at the airport, and no flights have departed from the Italian city as of now. Consequently, flights have been redirected to nearby airports. The incident raises questions about potential underlying issues with the aircraft's design or maintenance practices. Although the exact cause is yet to be determined, the damage to the runway and the severity of the situation suggest that a thorough investigation is necessary to rule out any deeper safety concerns that could impact the fleet's reliability. In light of the recent tensions in the aviation industry, this news has emerged regarding the Boeing 777. Although there have been no reported issues with the 777, the FAA has recently issued a new Airworthiness Directive, AD, for this aircraft. This decision follows an analysis suggesting that similar incidents observed on the Boeing 747 could also occur with the 777. According to you, in the case that there has been no incident occurring with 777, is this prediction of FAA necessary? The FAA explained that the key design feature preventing potential ignition inside the fuel tanks of the 777 aircraft, specifically the 777-200-200LR, 300ER, and 777F models equipped with GE's GE90 engines, is the electrical bonding of the engine's fuel feed tube, which passes through the tanks. This bonding ensures that, even in the event of a lightning strike hitting the engine nacelle, an ignition source does not form within the fuel tank. The fuel feed lightning protection features include the spar bulkhead fitting that redirects the majority of current during a lightning event. As stated by the regulator, separate bonding jumpers installed both outside and inside the fuel tank offer extra electrical pathways to manage current from lightning strikes. Additionally, a non-bonding component combined with an encapsulation seal over the spar fitting inside the tank enhances protection against potential sparking. This issue was first identified across all 747 aircraft, and to address it, the FAA issued a final regulatory directive on November 20th, 23. The analysis of reports related to the AD for the 747 allowed Boeing and the FAA to conclude that the 777 could potentially encounter similar bonding and sealing faults. 
On model 747 airplanes, the bonding jumper outside the fuel tank is failing at an excessive rate in addition to the known degradation of the primary electrical bonding path through the spar fitting. The regulatory agency is concerned that although no faults have yet been identified, these features are often only inspected or replaced conditionally. The FAA also stated that the 777 is expected to be affected to a similar or lesser extent. The technical issue concerning lightning protection features and fuel safety of the Boeing 777 series is currently of great concern to the FAA. Specifically, the worry arises from the seals surrounding the fuel feed lines located within the aircraft's fuel tanks. According to the FAA, these seals are crucial components that protect the fuel system in the event of a lightning strike. However, they are typically not thoroughly inspected unless there are specific maintenance issues. This presents a hidden risk as identifying poor electrical bonding is not straightforward during standard maintenance checks, leading to safety concerns when the aircraft is struck by lightning. Another complicating factor is that the electrical bonding of these components is difficult to detect during routine maintenance. Since electrical bonding depends on the installation process, when components are removed, maintenance personnel must conduct careful measurements to ensure they meet resistance requirements. If not properly checked, this can result in unreliable electrical bonding, creating a risk of sparks within the fuel tank, particularly at the connections inside the tank. This underscores the critical importance of careful installation and maintenance to ensure the safety of the aircraft's fuel system. Additionally, the FAA emphasizes that the encapsulation of the fuel tank connector fittings is designed to prevent sparks or arcs from occurring when struck by lightning. However, if the electrical bonding is inadequate, these locations become the most susceptible to sparking, posing a risk of fuel tank explosions if flammable fuel vapors are present. Therefore, this encapsulation, while intended to protect the system, may still be unreliable in certain circumstances. The unique design of the Boeing 777 also warrants attention. Each aircraft features two connection points on each wing that link the fuel lines to the airframe, one at the front spar and another on the upper section of the engine mount area. These connections serve as an alternative path for lightning current to dissipate into the airframe, minimizing the amount of current entering the fuel tank. However, the FAA warns that 777 aircraft equipped with G90 engines lack additional connectors in this area, elevating the risk of safety issues compared to other models. Even more concerning is the FAA's assessment that similar issues have been observed in certain models of the Boeing 747 and could potentially recur in the 777. As a result, the FAA is considering implementing new regulations to address this risk, not only for the 777 equipped with General Electric engines, but also for variants utilizing Pratt and Whitney and Rolls-Royce engines. So, how FAA's directive affect this aircraft? The regulator estimated that 174 aircraft in the U.S. will be affected by the directive, which mandates three actions related to inspections of the two fuel feed tube saddle clamps engine fuel feed tube to wing structure, bonding jumpers, and tube clamps forward of the wing front spar, and the repetitive measurement of the electrical bonding resistance between the wing structure and engine fuel feed tube. Boeing has proposed a series of important corrective actions concerning the 777 aircraft to address safety issues. Specifically, these measures include modifying bonding jumpers, installing new saddle clamps, and replacing those clamps with metal parts that contact the fuel tubes. Additionally, Cleaning and replacing any damaged bonding jumpers are part of the maintenance strategy. According to the FAA, these actions are necessary if any resistance measurements exceed regulatory limits. However, they are only considered temporary. The FAA also noted that the manufacturer is developing a more comprehensive inspection to enhance lightning protection features. Inspection times may take up to three hours, costing approximately $255 per occurrence, including labor costs. Airlines operating this aircraft still must perform detailed inspections and bonding durability measurements within 90 days of the regulation's issuance. All corrective actions must be completed before the next flight, accompanied by annual recurring inspections to ensure maximum safety. These aim to mitigate potential risks associated with lightning strikes and improve the overall reliability of this aircraft, emphasizing the commitment to passenger safety and airworthiness.